Well, here we are. I figure the best way to do this is I've got an older video where I just kind of showed pictures of what I built and all that. So I need to clean this thing out anyway. And I actually bought some stuff for the door. Because if you look around the door, it's just got KO wool where I've tried to seal it off. But I got some stuff that's supposed to be for like fire bricks so I can put it on. Because when I made this, I didn't make it good enough to seal. So there was some spots that leaked out. I think what I'm going to do right now is reverse engineer this. And uh, I'll show you. And we'll do the electronics and stuff last. The electronics are really the hardest part of this build. Everything else, if you have a drill press or even like a drum or something, it's really easy. And you have to learn how to weld, but you have to learn to weld good, as you can see from this. So the first thing I did, here's your thermal couple. And uh, since the fire bricks are so light and easy to work with, I just drilled the hole small and then attach the bricks into it. Wow, looks like I need a new thermal couple too. Glad I did this. Yeah, that thermal couple is about fried, so uh, it's about time I replace that. So there's my first thing. Look at that thing, that thing's fried open. Glad I did this. This top sheet is removable, just like this. So yeah. I just welded this top piece on. And this is exactly why I want to be able to take this stuff apart. These pieces right here, just three bricks. Two like that, and all connected with uh, the mortar. Same with this. You can see I used that KO wall in the middle. Which basically, now this, I learned this from like Web, I guess Red Path at the time, but now it's Weber Homemade. You take stainless steel bolts and a fire brick, you know, drill the holes, put them through stainless steel bolts so they can withstand the heat. Drill it through, put them through, and you got your uh, knife stand. In fact, a lot of this build I kind of took from, uh, I keep wanting to call it Red Path, but it's Weber Homemade. Let's get into the fat of this thing. So the coils, the coils I bought already wound. You know, you can go on and you can buy them. Um, I think it's like budget casting or something. What you gotta do though, is when you stretch, you gotta put the resistance on them. You put them on a multimeter to check the resistance to see if they work properly. I think it was like six or nine. If you look up building a heat treat oven, there's like a DC knives guy, and he's got like all the specs you can go by. Just do a little bit of research and it's real easy. But the thing is, and I'll put some pictures in, how I did this is I just laid it out, I drew it out, and then I set my drill press to a quarter inch, and I just ran them through the drill press, you know? Slid them through just like a track. And with zip, 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 they, that's all you need is a drill press, uh, even just a drill, anything, you know, you could probably even score it. They, they just are so easy to cut and all that. And what I did is I took, once I had the tracks laid in, I took a string and put the string from here and wound it through and taped the string in. And that's how I knew how long these had to be, how long I had to stretch them. So whatever the string came out, stretch them to that string. Both sides. Now back here, these are some more stainless steel bolts. As you can see, I attached these to the stainless steel bolts and ran it through. The bottom is hard brick. See, that was the most expensive part of this build. Not the bricks, but getting the bricks shipped out to me was really expensive. You know, it was almost more to ship them than it was for the bricks. So if you can find bricks, oh, here's one that's, what I also did is bought, bought some more of this cathode wire which is basically what these are wound from. And you make little staples. And then you just push them through. See, staple, 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 staple. And it holds it all in perfect. This one came out right here. But uh, other than that, they all seem to hold pretty well. Yeah, and they just push right into the fire brick. The bottom is hard brick. I put a layer of, um, you know, refractory cement. I don't want to dig it all out, but just 
line the bottom with fractured, you know, hard brick on the bottom, then covered it with a line of uh, refractory cement. Actually, for as much as I've done in here, this doesn't look bad at all. It's actually holding up really well. So I'm glad to see that. It's been, it's been over a year, a year and a half or so since I've had this. So, all right, let me get the top back on that. I'm glad I did that because I need a new thermal couple. <laughs> yeah, this just goes back like it came out. There's the center. Tail rules stopping the flow. Get them all tight. And here's the other thing I'll show you. So this handle. Just two pieces of mild steel. A piece of half inch steel. Took the torch, I bent it, bent it in two. I put a spring in the middle. So when you pull it like this, see how it puts pressure against it to lock it in? This, you know, is just, uh, I think it's one inch steel. It's all the same steel here. These are doubled up, but you can see, double up and weld it. Weld line, weld it all together. You know, bad welds, the grinder and paint make me the welder I ain't. Then the hinges. The hinges were probably the worst part. I wanted to weld them on because, you know, I just wanted to learn welding. So, look how bad these are. Look at those big old nasty welds. That ain't coming off. If I want a new door, I'm gonna have to cut this whole piece off and build a new door. <laughs> or grind it all down. So this is the same thing. It's just one brick, two brick, three brick with a half brick in the middle and that made this you know basically I just laid it out two bricks high one two bricks so that's four bricks here you know four bricks here on the floor I laid just like this a brick here you know a brick here and then two which that's how you do so that's a half brick and a full brick and then this part this is just a piece of mild steel cut to an L this rolls up like that, slides over. You push, see how that spring puts tension on it? Bam. And see, I wanted to make sure this was, you could take it apart. That's why I built these to go in like that and to hold it all in. The back is the fun part. <laughs> there we go. Hold on, tight. Locked up. Now, all right, let me get to the back of this. All right, so here, the bolts come through. This right here is high temperature wire. You buy it just for that. So you can see the wires are coming through, the cap and the wires are coming through, everything's bolted together and hooked onto this high temperature wire. You can see I made this extra four or five inches here so I can have everything sticking out. I don't have to worry about anything touching. And down here is my ground wire, which is ground to the chassis of the whole heat treating oven. So that should take care of the back. You can just see where the stainless steel bolts come through that are attached to the cathinal wire, the elements. And then you got the high temperature wire. Easy peasy. And then here, since it's running in series, because it's on 220, you connect them both at the bottom. So one goes in, comes down, connects to the other one at the bottom, runs back up, it comes out here. Yeah, of course I put the top back on, but you can see. So one bolt comes in right here, runs up, runs down here, down through here, connects here. This one, the two tie together. Then it comes back up here and out because it's 220. Now, if you're wiring for 110, you have to wire it different. You have to check your your uh, schematics and all that. I, you know, I'm gonna basically go over how it's done, but you need to study electronics if you want to get it right, and at least do some research. It's really easy to do, but, you know, you're working with 220 and you're working with mains power. You know, it's easy to do, but it can also kill you. So, do your research heavily, or find someone that knows electronics to do it. But it's real simple. You got 220, it's alternating current. So, you know, you tie one, 
and it comes back out to the PID. Like I say, look up that D, it's like DC knives or something like that. They're just put in how to build a heat treat oven. I went to that site a thousand times. And here's the next part, the solid state relays. Now, for 220, I had to get two. One goes to each one, you see? One hot in here, one hot in here. And then these two come from the PID, out to the PID. Here's one side, 110 or 120, 120. That makes your 220. Then they connect together. But you have to, you know, look in your diagram and look how your PID is wired. And you can see I put it on not only uh, an aluminum base that you can buy with for these, I put it on a separate half inch aluminum. And the whole thing is on the fireproof welding blanket, just for backup. Like everything, they're all on fire bricks. Everything's sitting on fire bricks down there. I got all kinds of welding blankets for if I ever drop it or anything. Which is, here we go, is the brains of the build. Here's the brain. You got your 220 in. You don't have to add lights. I just put the lights on to show when it's on. And this is like an on off switch. So I can have the PID on, but not the elements on. Here's the power switch right here. And I also put in, you know, instead of a fuse, I put in a breaker. So if anything ever gets a power sur surge, these things will pop and you reset them. One for each 120 line. All 220 is is two 110 lines into your circuit breaker. But if you don't know how to mess with the circuit panel or breaker panel, hire someone. They'll do it, you know, under a hundred bucks, it's worth your life. So I worked at like, you know, I worked in construction, so I kind of knew what I was doing. But believe me, for months and months, I studied every aspect of wiring a circuit breaker, wiring my house, codes all that be very careful don't do it you know hire someone but that's probably this is probably going to be the hardest part if you don't know anything about electronics Whew, i haven't even had this thing open for so long so here we go pretty easy your 220 see i've got it on a, i've got a this is not plugged in i can plug it in i got my wall outlet right there so it's not plugged in and i've also got a 110 for my light it's not 110 it's a this is a transformer i've said in previous things these wall boards just convert ac to dc so it steps down 110 down to 12 volts so this is 12 volts out here's my thermocouple which i'm going to need a new thermocouple thermocouple on mine is on i think nine and ten or is it not? no Four and five is my thermal couple. Ground, oh no, that's not ground. My output, this uh, one and 13 are to signal my over temps and my under temps. So that goes to this light, this goes to this light. Here we go, ground comes in and ground goes back out. Ground goes, this goes right to the chassis of my heat treat oven. The two hots go to your relays. One hot out, one hot out here goes to the switch I had a fancy carbon fiber switch off my switch one side goes to the relay and the other side goes to the PID and that's for and there is no hot and neutral they're both hot so one hot goes to one relay and the other hot goes to the second relay one hot comes to the PID PID the other hot comes to the other part of the PID this is the input of the PID now with these PIDs, you can wire on both 110 or 220. This is 220. So here's our inputs of inputs for 220, 110, 110. Here's our output. So one side of the output goes to the switch. One side of the output, the other output goes to the other side of the switch. Now, I got these double line. So the side, the green, the one side, this is one relay. And this is one relay. So this comes off here, goes into the switch. This comes off of here, goes in right to the relay, and goes right in that, which says it's turned on, and then goes into the switch. So
So when this switch is turned and then it comes out and goes to the relay. So these two go to the relay. You don't need the switch and you don't need the green light. But this tells me, see, if I don't, these two come in hot and hot, which this hot also goes out. But if it doesn't also have power from this one, then it's not going to turn on the light and it's not going to turn on the other relay. Check, you know, it's very easy. It looks complicated like this, but I, I'm having a hard time explaining it. Your two lines into your PID and your two lines out. And then here's one for the light and another one for this light. One's over and one's under temperature. And here's your thermal couples. That's all it is. I just put in this extra switch and green light so I know when my elements are on and I control my elements myself. So you can disregard all this and just do power in and then one power goes to one relay for 220 and one see if you do 110 you're only going to need one relay so it'd be like 110 would be a neutral to one relay one side of the relay hot to one side of the relay and neutral to the one side of the relay but since i've got 220 i had to have two relays so one hot goes to one relay the other hot goes to the other like I said, ground goes to the chassis of the oven. And then you split that off of the hot goes to the input. Now, if this is 110 on the PID, it'd be neutral and 110. But since these are two, both 220, I mean, since it's 220, it's both 110. So you just wire it up, in come. You know, you want, you only want to set up a fuse or a breaker of some kind. You split your uh, ground straight off. Then you wire right to your um, circuit breakers. One hot, one hot. That's why I have two circuit breakers. And then off the circuit breaker, one hot goes to the switch, the other hot goes to the switch, then out. So in and out. See, if I didn't put this switch here in this light, this would go right to the relay, and this would go right to the relay. It probably made it even more confusing, but I'm not good at explaining. <laughs> That's the electronics, and I got a ramp soak PID so you can set it and set it to different cycles and different steps. But let me show you this now that I've done that. Let me show you this. Here's the green that came out and here's the other black. So hot and hot. Come to one relay and then you double them over to the second one. So hot and hot. And then here's this right here is your hot. Hot and hot. And these go to your elements. Element, element, hot, hot. And this turns it on and off. So that's why you have to connect the green in and then connect it over to here. Black in over to here. Well, green in to over here, black in to over here. So when it clicks on, it's going to click this one on and this one on. And it goes out to your elements. Just study the manual how yours is hooked up. I'm just kind of showing you how I did it. It's really simple. It's just in and out, you know. Two lines come in. You break them off. You put, you know, you know, you 110 and 110 come in. You put them to the circuit breaker. The two lines come out from the circuit breaker and go to the switch. Then, then when you, the ones that come off the switch, you split. One goes to the relay and one goes to the PID. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, just write them in the comments and I'll try to help you out as much as I can. Because trying to show you that, I understand it, but the more, I have a feeling the more I'm trying to explain it, the more I'm confusing you. Yeah, that's how I built my heat treat oven. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, it's real simple. It's one of the easiest projects to do. The welding can be bad. You just have to weld it together so it's strong. The fire bricks are easy. Just draw out how you want them lined up and drill in a quarter inch. Then you make the, uh, you take the cast mill wires and you make them into little staples. You just, you know, the straight wire, you stretch them out. Once you take the string and you know, that you, that's the length and easy i mean it's really easy any questions just ask feel free to ask thanks for watching please like please comment i'm sure i'm gonna get some comments on this if you figure out if you want to know how to do it but uh no problem share with your friends and as always uh take it easy